scripture and the prayer this morning. Scripture will be coming from Proverbs 3 verses 5 through 12. And the word of the Lord says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So thou, so shall thy bones be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither the weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he corrected, even as a father the son in whom he delighted. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you on today, Lord God. First and foremost, Lord God, to give you thanks. Thank you for everything that you do for us, everything that you've done for us, Lord God. Lord God, we just give you all the praise on today. Lord God, you are omnipotent, Lord God. You are Lord of Lord. King of kings, Lord God. You are the breaker of chains, Lord God. Lord God, we ask that all chains that's not linked to you 
be broken on this day, Lord God. Lord God, we ask that you bind all generational curses, Lord God. Lord God, not just the individual families, but the generational curses of this country, Lord God. Lord God, we just lift up our nation right now, Lord God. Lord God, I declare that spiritual warfare is at an all-time high, Lord God. Lord God, we just pray that your will be done, Lord God. Lord God, we ask you to strengthen our communities, strengthen our nation, strengthen this ministry, Lord God, and strengthen the man that's the head over this ministry, Lord God. This is our word and your this is our prayer. In your son Jesus' name we pray, Lord God. Amen. Praise the Lord, anybody? Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord. Let everything that have birth, praise ye the Lord. Come on, this morning, somebody open up your mouth, begin to clap your hands and praise the Lord our God this Sunday morning. For this is the day that our Savior has made. In spite of the situations going on in life, we will rejoice. In spite of the current situation of this nation, we will rejoice and we'll be glad in it. Come on, somebody give God praise this morning. Father, we lift your name on high. For you are worthy of our praise, you are worthy of the honor, you're worthy of all of the glory. This, this morning, let's open up this morning and just begin to just glorify God in a brand new way. Tell them, Father, we love you. Tell them, Father, we thank you, Jesus. Found you to be worthy. Found you to be kind. Yes, you are. Found you to be strong, Lord. That's why we can sing a song that says these words. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. Yeah, yeah. I'm so glad you came to save us. Everybody help me say, Lord. Lord, I lift your name on high. Right where you are, you say this, Lord, I Somebody to say this. I'm so glad you came. So glad you came to say. One more time. Us. Everybody say, Lord, I live. Lord, I say. lift your name on. Come on, pour out this morning and say, Lord, I love to sing. I love to sing your praise. Is that true this morning? Come on, say this. That I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. Come on, testify this morning. I'm so glad. So came, came yeah. Come on, let's do it together. Us. Everybody say this. You came from heaven, came so from heaven to earth to show, show the way from the earth, from the earth to, the cross. to the cross. My death, my death, death from the cross from to the grave. Cross. Come on, say this. Let's say this together. Everybody will say, You came from heaven. You came from heaven to, to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death, my death from the cross to the grave. From the grave, from the grave. We say, Lord, I give your name. Come on, clap your hands one time right there. Come on, let's take it up right here. Oh Lord, I lift your name. Lord, say. I lift your name on high. And we say, Lord, I love to sing. I love to sing your praise. Somebody say, I'm so glad you're so in. Glad That's you're it. In my life. Wave your hand and say, I'm so glad. So glad hey. you came to sing. One more 
time everybody say Lord. Oh, I lift your name on high. Come on, proclaim this to say, Lord, I love, Lord, to, I love to sing. Lord, I love to sing your praises. You say, I'm so glad you're I'm in so my life. Thank you, God, for never leaving us. I'm so glad. Come on, everybody say this. You came from heaven. You came from heaven to earth. To show us the way. From the earth, from the earth to the earth. From the cross, from the cross to the grave. From the grave to the sky. Lord, I live. A second. Oh, come on, let's do it right here. Oh, everybody say, you. Come on and do it. God, we lift your name. Yes, we lift your name. We lift your name, Jesus. Come on, if you love him this morning, come on, worship and begin to worship. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. In spite of what's going on, I wonder what will your response be? I wonder if your response is still, I got to yet praise. If anybody this morning, if you still got to yet praise this morning, come on, in spite of what it looks like, yet will I praise him. In spite of how hard it gets, yet will I praise him. I wish I had somebody. Wish I had somebody. I didn't mind lifting your hands. Didn't mind raising your voice. Come on, tell God, thank you for blessing you with another day. In a special way. Come on, because you love him. Yes, Jesus. Good morning, everyone. So glad to have you all join us yet again another Sunday. These are your announcements. Just a reminder, there will be Bible study tomorrow. You can join us Facebook Live or YouTube Live starting at 6 p.m. Join us and invite a friend. For all financial obligations, you can pay several ways. Through the church's app, you can pay online through text to give or using our cash app, which is dollar sign RCWC1. You can also bring your financial obligations here to the church. These are your announcements. Please govern yourselves accordingly. God is worthy to be praised. Come on, don't stop clapping those hands right where you are.
try and describe just how good he is, just how great he is, just how loving he is. This morning, we're just going to call God. That he, we'll tell you, God, we thank you for being awesome. Hallelujah. celebrate them this morning. I said, come on, clap those hands and celebrate them this morning. Come on, right where you are, let's do it together. Everybody say, my God reigns. Say, my God reigns. Say, our God reigns. Yeah. Our God reigns. We say, Lord, you reign above, above every day. Come on, y'all say that with us. My God reigns. Yeah. My God reigns. Sing, our God reigns. Our God reigns. Everybody say, Lord, you reign above, above every day. We say this with power and majesty. With power and majesty. Dominion. Dominion. Everybody say, You reign. I dare you, come on, lift up your hands and say it with us. Say, with power and majesty. With power and majesty. Dominion. Say, Dominion. Say, Dominion. Say, You reign. Let's take it up one time. Oh, come on, clap and say, My God reigns. My God reigns. Sing, Our God reigns. Everybody reign. say, Lord, you reign. It's above every name. Above every name. Sounds so good. Sing, My God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. We say, Lord, you reign. Above every name. Above every name. Come on, say, With power and majesty. With power and majesty. Dominion. Authority. Tell them, say, you reign. Let's sit right there. We're going to say it together. With power and majesty. Power and majesty. And dominion. Authority. We say, you reign. Come on, one last time. Oh, say, my God reigns. My God reigns. And our God reigns. Our God we reigns. say, Lord, you reign. Above. Above every day. Over my circumstances, Over my circumstances. Giving, me giving me another chance. We say, You reign. Come on, let's stay right there. Let's do it again. We say this. Over my circumstances, Over my circumstances. giving me another chance. You reign. Can we say it just one last time? Over my circumstances, giving me. One more here, come on, declare it over my circumstance. Over my circumstance. Give me another chance. Everybody say this. You reign. Hey. You reign. Oh God, you reign. Is anybody else excited this morning? Come on, say, you reign. Tell him, say, you reign. Lord, you reign. If you got it in you, come on, lift your voice right here and tell them, you reign. You reign. We say, you reign. you reign. Everybody say, you reign. 
Come on, that's a good place to clap your hands and lift your voice and tell him you reign. Say you reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. Say yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You reign. Over my circumstances. You reign. Over my life, Lord. You reign. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. You reign. Over my Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Hey, tell him you reign. You reign. You still. You still reign. Come on, right there. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. God is awesome and he deserves all the glory. It belongs to him. And everything that he does, God, we give the glory back to you. Everybody sing glory, glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name forever. Say that. Glorify your name, oh God. Yeah, we magnify, we magnify your name. Glorify, glorify your name, oh God, oh.
this Sunday morning. And we don't take it lightly. And we don't take you for granted. As always, I say, I know you could be in so many other places. We are humbled in our spirit to have you to be a part of our worship. If you would take just a moment to go ahead, if you're on Facebook, to like and to share. Amen. Invite someone to be a part of worship this morning. Let's start this year off inviting people to Christ. Inviting people to the Word of God. Amen. So take a moment to go ahead and start a watch party. Those of you that know how, go ahead and share this, this service with someone this morning. As we hear from the Most High God. Hallelujah. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we, we thank you this morning for allowing us this privilege of assembling. Yes, Lord. We understand now, Lord, that life is a gift that only you can give. To have mobility in our limbs and cognizance in our minds. God, only you can do that. And so God, we, we thank you with every part of our being for this grand gift that you've given us this morning. The gift of assembling in your presence. Bless be the name of the Lord. We pray, oh God, that thou would forgive us of all of our sins, God. All of our trespasses. All of our wrongdoings. God, please forgive us. Oh God, we thank you. That you're no shorter than your word. You said if we would confess our sins, that you are just enough to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Clean us up, oh God, and we'll give you glory, give you praise. Open our ears now, Lord, that we might be able to hear. Yes, Lord, and help us as, old, as David did to hide this word in our heart that we might not sin against them. Oh God, we thank you now for the work of the word. For your word says that it shall accomplish that which you sent it out to accomplish. And we believe this morning that somebody will be healed. Somebody will be delivered. Burdens will be lifted. Someone will be comforted. Someone will hear what thus says the Lord. We thank you for it. Thank you for this ministry. Thank you for those that are listening this morning. Those that are a part of this worship. God, will you bless them? Bless their homes. God, we'll thank you for it. And we count it done right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord again, and we're so glad again to just be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Just one more celebration. Can we just celebrate God one more time? Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. With our hands lifted up. <laughs> Feel with praise. Glory to your name, God. Thou art worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. Set the atmosphere. Make it conducive for blessings to flow this morning. Make him welcome in your home. Make him welcome not just in your physical house, but in your tabernacle. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, Lord, you are welcome in this house. Amen. Amen. But we're grateful and we're privileged. Amen. I want to share just a few words with you this morning. Pray God that the word of the Lord is blessing you when you receive this word. Last week, we talked about a time of renewal. I pray.
pray that that word found you where you were tended to your needs. Amen. We serve a God that we believe that this word is living. Amen. So this morning again, just for a few moments, I want to talk to you with this thought in mind. Our charge for 2021. Again, our charge for 2021. Amen. If you get your Bibles quickly, amen, get your apps, whatever you have, amen. And I want to invite you to the book of Ephesians, chapter 5. Ephesians, chapter 5. We'll be reading from verse 15 through 20. And I'll be reading out of the ESV version this morning. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 20. Amen. If you'll read with me where you are, let us join in the reading of the word of God. Look carefully, then how you walk. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. But be filled with the Spirit addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. Verse 20, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And again, I want to talk about, real quick, our charge for 2021. It's important, my brothers and my sisters, that we don't just run wildly into this new year. Amen. And I told you that we've got to be careful that we are not spiritually spontaneous. That we are not waiting to hear from God and that we don't really have a plan. We've got to have a systematic plan as we address this new year of 2021. You know what it says in Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 2. It talks about writing the vision. And it talks about that, that he that readeth it or see it may run, but you've got to have a plan. And so I want to talk about our charge for 2021. What is it that God is expecting of us? What is he expecting us to do or to, to accomplish, to achieve? What does God, amen, charge us with for this new year? Even when, it, when Paul talked to Timothy, he gave him a charge. And the charge is simply what he expects us to do, what he holds us accountable for doing in the job, in the specific areas that he's assigned to us. And so in this year of 2021, we have an assignment. Hello, somebody. We have a mission to complete. We have a task that we must complete. And so it's important that we understand what is our charge so that God will be happy with the work that we give and the work that we do. And so Let's deal with that real quick. So, number one, if you want to write it down, let's go ahead and write it down. Be careful how you live. Let me say it again. The first charge that we have for this year is simply this. Be careful how you live. Understanding that we don't live forever. Amen. 
And sometimes it, it looks as if we believe that we live forever, that there's never going to be a day that we, we're, we're, we're going to die. There's never a day that we got to get in, given charge or given account of the deeds that we've done. But I charge you through the Holy Ghost and the Word of God this morning that you be careful how you live. We mustn't lose sight that this earth is not our home. We mustn't lose sight that, that we have another home not made by the hands of man, eternal in the heaven. And we can't live as if this is the end. Here, this is not the end. I used to hear him say, uh, amen, when I was growing up in my home church, that we were just pilgrims traveling through a barren land. This is, this is, not, our, this is not our home. That's one of the reasons the Bible says that, that we shouldn't mourn when a saint dies. And if we're going to mourn, we ought to mourn when someone is born into this world. And as usual, we kind of got it back because we celebrate when babies are born. And we mourn when saints go home to be with God. We must remember, we can't afford to waste time this year. On foolishness and folly. We have a job to do. In the book of Psalms 90 and 10 it says, Our days may come to 70 years or 80 if our strength endures. Yet the best of them are but full of trouble and sorrow. For they quickly pass and we fly away. I, I want to share with you to my younger, my younger brothers and my sisters, you might feel that you're in your prime right now. But I'm telling you that you'll go to sleep and one day you'll wake up and you'll be a senior citizen if by reason of strength. And time will have gotten away from you. In that same book of Psalms 90, verse 12, listen to what it says. It says, teach us to number our days. In other words, that you've got to understand that every day that you spend takes you closer to the end. They're not granting more days. They're not giving more days. Every day that we live brings us closer to our end. And it's important that we be busy doing the work of God. We've got to be careful how we live. Another reason we have to be careful is because there are some things we can't take back. Things that you say, things that you do, things that you may regret that you've done in life. You may say you're sorry and you may mean that, but there are things that we cannot redo. But we got to be careful how we treat our neighbor. We got to be careful how we treat our family, our loved ones. We got to be careful because God is watching. There's somebody keeping a record. Of all of the things that we do. And even when we do them by night and we think nobody saw it, I want to tell you today, somebody saw it. Even though it's never been brought up to you, even though nobody's ever questioned you about it, there's somebody that never sleeps. It never slumbers. The Bible says that when we die, we got to give an account of our deeds, both good and bad. So there will be a reckoning one day. Be careful. My brothers and my sisters, hear what thus says the Lord. If you're not living the way God wants you to live, change it. Because even if you're not doing it, it doesn't mean that he doesn't hold you accountable for it. Just because life is, it seems to be moving smoothly and things seem to be going in your, your favor, I need you to understand that if you're not doing what God assigned to you to do, he's not pleased. Be careful how you live. Let me give you another one. Take advantage of every opportunity. Hello, somebody. Don't squander your time away. Don't be slothful. Don't be slowful. Don't be, amen, putting things off for tomorrow. Get busy doing the work of the Lord. You know, I used to hear people say, you know what, I, I'm, I'm going to start coming to church when I get through sowing my oats. 
But what happens if you die in the field before you come out? I hear people saying, I'm too young, amen, to serve God. I'm too young to, to, to do what God wants me to do. I, but what if you don't make it until you're old? He still holds you accountable. In the book of John, chapter 9, verse 4, in the NIV, it says, As long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming. When no man can work. There will come a time that you're going to want to do God's will and you may not be able to do it. I, I, I remember in, in the word of God, when the rich man died and went to hell, he asked Abram, could he, could he come back and tell his brother not to do the things he's supposed to do and stop doing the wrong things and change his life? And he said, you didn't listen and neither will he. Don't let him catch you with your work undone. You know what the word of God said, be thou faithful until death. And he'll give you a crown of life. John 15 and 16 says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last. So that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. Are you being fruitful for the kingdom? Are you bearing fruit for the kingdom? You remember what happened to the fig tree. Jesus came by and there was no figs on the tree. Healthy tree, beautiful leaves, but bear no fruit. Make sure that we don't just look like good Christians. Make sure that we, don't, we haven't learned how to talk like Christians when we're around Christians. And we talk like other folk when we're around them. Because he did not judge the tree by the way that it looked. It had fig leaves on the tree. That was the reason they came over because it looked like a Christian. God help us. But when he began to examine and to search for the fruit of the tree, there were no fruit to be found. As I move on to number three, my question is, if he examines you, will you have any fruit? Take advantage of every opportunity. Number three, if I hurry, two words, be wise. Be wise. In verse 17, it says, foolish is different from stupid. Amen. He talks about in verse 17 that we can't be stupid. We can't be foolish. People can be smart but still foolish. The way not to be foolish is to study God's word. Make sure that he doesn't call you foolish. Make sure you're doing what thus says the Lord. In verse 17 it says, therefore do not be foolish. But understand what the will of the Lord is. We can't be foolish. We can't be careless. We got to know what the word of God says. Amen. We can't be foolish now. God is calling us to be sober and deliberate in what we do and what we say. Be wise now. Make wise decisions. Don't, don't make decisions of a child. The word of the Lord said, when I was a child, I speak as a child. I acted like a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. When he talk about being wise, it's time for us now, my brothers and my sisters. Time for us to be wise now. We got to realize if you're, if you're 60 or 58, like me, you can't act like you're 22 now. You got to be wise now. You can't put off the day for tomorrow. You got to take care of the business of the day. You can't act like the world now. 
You know better now. Be wise. Number four, we're almost done with this. Taken out of verse 18. And 18 says, and do not get drunk with wine. For this is debauchery. But be filled with the Spirit. And I, I, I'm not going to get into you, uh, get into a debate with you whether or not you should or should not drink. I, that, that's not my purpose for, for, for giving you this charge today. That's not the purpose of that. But I will say this. People who are drunk, and fear with the spirit have similarities. Let me say it again. People who are drunk and those that are filled with the spirit have similarities. Both are under the influence of something. One alcohol and one the spirit of the Lord. We have a choice whether we let Satan or the spirit control or influence our lives. Who, who are you giving control of your life to? The, the results would be very different. See, Satan will lead us to destruction. Amen. He hasn't changed his operandi. He come to steal, kill, and destroy. Make sure you understand, as I, I, I hurry here, that if it doesn't make you better, it makes you worse. If it's not helping you to live, it's helping you to die. Praise the Lord. Satan will lead us to destruction while the spirit will make our lives great and produce the fruit of the spirit, which is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, fruitfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You'll find that in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. Don't allow anything, whether drugs, alcohol, uh, uh, pornography, your hobbies, your cell phone, uh, job, TV, to control you. Hello, somebody. Instead, give yourself to be filled with the Spirit and let him lead and control your life. Hello, this morning. Be filled with the Spirit. And isn't it ironic that they call, when you go by the liquor store, they call it spirits, wine and spirit. See, the devil has a way of trying to mock Jesus. Wine and spirit. And so what he says is, or what he's saying to us, I want you to be filled with my spirit. The destructive spirit. But the only way that you're going to have the spirit of the Lord in you, remember, you must have a clean temple. See, the devil is smart. Because he figured that if he can get you hooked on his spirits, plural, that there's no room for the Holy Spirit to come in because he can't dwell in an unclean temple. So my charge to you this morning is to be filled with the Spirit of God this morning. And let me say this, and, I, and I'm moving on here. And when I say that, that doesn't mean that you got to be walking down the street and, and everything you say is praise the Lord, hallelujah, and somebody speak to you say God is an awesome God. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying that in your day-to-day -day movement, you need to have a conversation with God. You need to be hearing and listening to God, even in the direction that you take, even in the things that you say, in the places that you go, the people that you hang out with. You've got to have a ear to hear God, amen, and the Spirit will govern you what to do and where to go and who to go with. Do you ever get happy in your spirit when you by yourself? That somebody can be a witness today that sometimes you can just be driving down the street and out of nowhere the Holy Ghost will come in. You can just be thinking about the goodness of God and all that he's done for you. And before you know it, you're crying like a baby because you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Two last. Number five. I charge you to praise God this year. In verse 19, listen what it says. Addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. Now I need you to understand that because I don't want you to miss this. 
he's not simply talking about you going down the street or hanging out and you singing church songs. There's nothing wrong with that, and God loves that. But this type of singing he's talking about comes from your heart. Amen? It is, it is more than the song that someone sings, but a song that comes from a heart filled with the Holy Spirit. It is a song of praise to God. The person's situation may be difficult, but because the Spirit is filling, is filled with his with the Holy Spirit, he can praise God no matter what. See, we learn and we know through the word of God. Amen. That we don't have to wait till the battle is over. We can shout now. We don't have to wait until we've been healed. We can go ahead and praise God now. Because the truth is, and I don't have time to get into it, we really was healed before we got sick. Y'all ponder that for a while. We were delivered before we got entangled. But the problem is, and the situation is, and what he's talking about in this verse 19, is that when you're in the midst of a pandemic, when you're in the midst of not having a job, not, not having food enough, you've got to learn how to still tell God, God, I love you. You've got to learn how to still tell God, God, I praise your holy name. There's nobody like you. Because it's that kind of praise that begins to move God and to, to unction him to do something on your behalf. Let me give you one quick example. We've got to close this thing this morning. Two brothers ended up in jail. Not downtown. Two preachers got in jail. And you know how if we got in jail now, before you got in jail, good, you already be on Facebook. You already be on YouTube and Twitter and somebody else's. Two preachers, Paul and Silas, help us Holy Ghost. Went to jail. The church got together. Had a church meeting. Be careful, somebody. In today's time, if they had a church meeting, it'd be because they're trying to get you out of there now. The preacher in jail, we got to get rid of it. But, but they had a, a church meeting, a prayer meeting. They began to pray. But the record is, that while Paul and Silas were in jail, I hope y'all hear the Holy Spirit this morning, they began to praise God and to pray in jail. I, I don't know, help me Holy Ghost, I, I don't know what they were singing, but they might have been singing, what a mighty God we serve. They might have been singing, draw me nearer, yes Lord. They might have been singing amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved the ranch life. I don't know. I, I don't know what they were saying. Might have been singing, pass me not, oh gentle Savior. Oh, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. I don't know what they were saying. But I know that when they were singing, while they were lifting up the name of God, they weren't talking about their circumstances. They were talking about how mighty their God is. That the jail's door swing open. Listen to God. The fifth charge this year. Praise God. No matter the circumstances, no matter your situation, praise God. The final one today, number six, I charge you to give God thanks. Give God thanks. God wants us always to be thankful. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. Give thanks in all circumstances. This is the will of God 
in Christ Jesus concerning you. Learn how to tell God thank you. When I wake up in the morning, I tell God thank you. If I wake up and God wake me up at 3 o'clock in the morning before I pray, I say, Lord, thank you. Sometime I just be around the house. I got to go now. I just look around and see the goodness of God and the favor of God. I tell God, thank you. It's good to know that you're blessed. In my, my, my childhood, they sang a song and said, not only are we blessed, we're better than blessed. Take a moment this morning to tell God, thank you. Somebody ought to be witnessing to the others this morning that's on this broadcast. You ought to be witnessing and, and typing and saying, I'm, I'm blessed. Thank God. It doesn't mean that you don't have some, some issues and some circumstances that's got to be addressed, but what you're saying is, God, I'm better than some people. I could be a whole lot worse off. When I look back over my life, all I can do is tell God thank you. For every storm he brought me through, every mountain he brought me over, Thank you, Lord, for every prayer that you answer. Thank you, Lord, for every bill you paid, every, every meal you provided. Lord, I thank you. I'm blessed. May not have all that I want, but I'm blessed. And one songwriter, and I'm gone this morning. Said, I've had some good days. I've even had some hills. Yes, sir. Hills to climb. But you know what he said? He said, but when I think things over, <laughs> I, 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 listen, listen to what he says here. I, I won't complain. I could, I could, I, I could list down things that I've gone through. I, I could list the issues that I'm, I'm having right now. But when I think things over, all of my good days, I, I wish I had church in here today. All of my good days outweigh my bad days. I, I won't complain. Is that where you are this morning? Is that your sentiment this morning? That yes, it's, it's, it's tight right now. Yes, it's, it's a little uncomfortable right now. But, but when I think things over, <laughs> all of my good days, yes, sir, <laughs> they outweigh my, my bad days. I challenge you this morning. Give God the praise. Thank God this morning. We thank God for you this morning. We thank God for your family this morning. Let's go to God. Father, we thank you now. I've given the word that you've given me. And I find solace in the fact that you cannot lie. That if you sent a word, it shall accomplish that which you sent it to accomplish. And I believe that they are the better for it. I believe even me as your messenger. God, I'm better now. Hallelujah. And everybody that have heard this word and will hear this word, they shall be better. Because your word is full of life. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. And we thank you this morning. In Jesus' name.
Come on, give God praise. If I go to my seat, come on, give God praise. Bless me the name of the Lord. God bless you. This is Will. We'll see you all next week. The best is yet to come. chase after the Lord to make sure that we find him and that we keep him. Amen. Come on and put your hands together this last time.